Welcome back to day nine in distance learning with the fellow pirate family of the sixth grade math variety, Mr. G in with you. Uh, we are continuing our discussion of the coordinate plane. I have a little bit of some notes for you. We'll talk about the expectation of the assignments, you know, typical stuff that we do for the last eight. Now we're in day nine. Okay, so your packet of notes was attached to this video on your Google Classroom. So simply open that up, follow along, add it into your journal as you need to, as I tell you, which pretty much is everything that's going to be on there. But we'll get into that. So symmetry. Now I have talked about symmetry before in a concept in mathematics, saying that there's a lot of symmetry in math. And by that, I meant that we always see there is an equality between one side to the other side of a problem, of an equation, of a fraction when we have to convert those. That's when I talk about symmetry as a concept. Now we're going to actually going to do the practical application of symmetry with the coordinate plane. So we want to know, of course, what is symmetry, right? Well, that's a simple question. What's the answer? Symmetry involves lines. A lot of lines going through shapes. But why do they do that? Because we want them to give us similar parts facing each other. So we want a symmetry, meaning we want a shape to basically be the same on either side of it, right? And we get that through line symmetry. Line symmetry involves actually a line going through that figure, splitting it into equal parts, into halves or sections, if you will. And when it comes to symmetry, that's what we're looking for. Exactly similar. Similar meaning, same size, same shape. And that's what the line symmetry gives us. Okay? All right. So, to be a line of symmetry, the shape must have two halves that match exactly. Think about that when I talk about the example here. So, let's think about a heart. You've always, well, maybe you haven't, but some of us have made hearts on paper before for purpose or just for fun or the fact that Valentine's is on the way. I don't know. Anyways, so you trace your heart onto a piece of paper, right? And then you're going to sit there and you're going to cut out that heart and then it's going to unfold and you get a full heart, right? Okay, well, that's where we're talking about symmetry right there because when you do one half and cut through the paper, after it's been folded, of course, you fold the paper, you cut, you know what I'm talking about. So that you get the other half to be equal to the other side. So we have a nice, simple, happy, hopefully, line of symmetry. One side equal to the exact other. That's symmetry. Symmetry means that they both match. Okay? So that means technically, as I just said, if you could fold it back together, then both halves match up perfectly with no one side sticking over the other. That's what symmetry is all about. So why is it important in mathematics? Well, to make sure we understand symmetry, it helps us be able to understand the shape better uh, when it comes to finding area, maybe perimeter, uh, stuff of that nature, uh, the volume of it. It all comes together. It really does. So mirror image is a reflective duplication of an object that appears identical but reversed. When we talked about the transformation of the reflection, reflection being a flip, this is what we talk about, mirror image. A mirror image occurs on the other side. So this obviously was a reflection. This is a reflection. Her, she's a reflection. You're seeing the mirror image. When you're watching some videos maybe, and you notice the shirts are always written backwards because you're looking at a reflection. Those are mirror images, okay? So... Get some examples here. We've got some flags from various countries and states. We're going to see where we can find our line of symmetry. Let's go with an easy one. The U.S. flag. Is there symmetry in this flag? No. There is not. Because nowhere are you going to be able to draw a line through a midpoint of some form that's going to allow you to fold it in half and have the same thing on both sides. Just because of that little patch of stars over here, if they were like centered, maybe, but not happening on the U.S. flag. Okay, let's move on to Canada. Canadian flag, maple leaf. Well, the way the maple leaf was drawn on this flag, you could actually split it down the middle, right? If you split down the middle of the flag, you get symmetry, both halves being the same. Can we do a line this way? No, but we get at least one line of symmetry here. Okay, state of Maryland. 
that's crazy. Is there symmetry there? Some people try to say, yeah, if you cut it in half, you can fold it. Well, no, the images don't match up. The design doesn't match up. Same thing if we went a horizontal split. So that's not going to happen. Let's go with another one. The England, flag of England. Well, that's a cross of sorts. And due to that, since it's again centered pretty well, it gives us not just one, but actually two lines of symmetry. If we cut it down the middle vertically, cut it down the middle horizontally, we get equal parts. We get symmetry in the English flag and the Canadian flag, but not with the other two here. Okay, so lines of symmetry. There are many shapes that have a variety of types of lines of symmetry. Of course, single line symmetry refers to where there's only one point that you can cut through that'll give you equal sides or symmetrical sides. Of course, some examples here on your notes. You don't need to write all the examples, but do go ahead and write down the info for sure every time. Okay, what about two lines of symmetry? A lot of squared shapes or rectangular shapes, they tend to have two lines of symmetry. Even letters, the letter H has two lines of symmetry in a typed format because that bar goes down the middle of the actual letter. When you write it, maybe not so much, but if it's out of a program, then it's going to come out looking pretty decently, two lines of symmetry. Even basketballs, you follow the line of the basketball, looking straight down at it, when I say straight down, I mean where the cross points of the lines on the ball go. You can get two lines of symmetry out of that. Right? Rectangle, as I said, most square rectangle shapes, as long as they are square or rectangle, you will get two lines of symmetry. All right? Three lines of symmetry. Starts getting a little more uh, complex shapes sometimes. Um, equilateral triangles, they will definitely be three lines of symmetry. Equilateral, of course, meaning all sides and angles are the same. So that means you can cut through that in three different points. That'll come up more in the next section when we start talking about geometry. But know that triangle, three lines of symmetry. This is a fun visual 3D image. <laughs> uh, multiple lines of symmetry there. Even flower in nature here. A lot of flowers, a lot of na natural things happen to have symmetry in them. It's kind of weird, but it does happen. And then you have lines that are beyond three, again. Flowers of sorts. When you actually break down an actual square, that square is going to have actually multiple lines of symmetry because of the way that you can go vertically, horizontally, then you can go diagonally in both diagonal situations, and that gives you multiple lines of symmetry, gives you four, actually. Okay. Oh, this one, the circle, is almost an infinite number of lines of symmetry. Because anywhere, as long as it is straight through the center, is going to give you a line of symmetry. That's the beauty of math. All right, so no lines of symmetry. Simple enough. A trapezoid, obviously, they don't have equal distant lines, so it's not going to work out. There's no line there. Uh, your notes, I'm sure, are not symmetrical. Some, and as well, I shouldn't say some, most of all countries and you know pieces of land on the U.S. are very few, or the world, I should say. Not too many lines of symmetry there. Simple enough. Rotational symmetry. Now going back to the circle concept again. Rotational symmetry, let's just read what it says. An object rotational symmetry, also known as radial symmetry. Object that looks the same after a certain amount of rotations. Object may have more than one rotational symmetry. Again, simply meaning that wherever it's cut, you're going to find a line of symmetry almost identically all the way through. Maybe not so much there. But... Pinwheel, sure. Orange, slice, like that. Looks pretty. Symmetry in there. Okay. Wonderful. So, going through some math symbols. Do we have symmetry going on in any of these? Guess what? Yes, we do. Of course we do. We got double lines going through the plus sign. Subtraction, indeed. Also, we could do technically double. Uh, multiplication, yes again. Double again. Even division. But only one line that way. Well, I guess two lines that way. Why not? Let's go ahead and say that. Okay? So, even your math symbols, again, straight out of a computer program, are going to be symmetrical. Cool. All right. Polygons. How many lines of symmetry can we pull out of these polygons? 
I'm going to kind of rush through these again because we're not in class, so I don't need class participation. So we're just going to go through the triangle, of course. We can get how many? Looks like we got three. Okay. Square. What about the square? Square we can get? I see four. Okay. We have a pentagon. Pentagon's got five. A hexagon. Hexagon has six. And then let's look at the stop sign octagon. Your octagon's going to have... That's a lot of lines. What is that? That is eight. So maybe some of you are getting that connection. Triangle, three sides, three lines of symmetry. Square, four sides, four lines of symmetry. Pentagon, five sides, five lines of symmetry. Hexagon, six sides, six lines of symmetry. Octagon, eight sides, eight lines of symmetry. Hmm, make you think a little bit, doesn't it? Okay. Even letters, as we already talked about, some letters, again, when a basic format like that, are going to have lines of symmetry go through them, as we can see. Some do, some do not, obviously. A, B, C, D, and E, yes. F, no. G, no. H, I, yes. J, K, L, no. Nope. And then M, of course. O, many. T's got some. You got U, V, W, X, and Y. All types of letters with symmetry even within them. Okay? Wonderful. Now, let's turn over to the actual assignment that you will be working on today. And there are two worksheets that are your responsibility. We're going to start off on this one. And notice I have it opened up in my Cami app as well, so that I can actually show you what you can do here. On this page, and there are multiple examples, I have it zoomed in, of course, you are going to be drawing lines of symmetry on each shape. It says A line. But if you can do multiple, I want to see multiple. See how well you can do, if it's possible. Maybe that, maybe so. Right off the get bat, we have an isosceles triangle. Isosceles means two lines equal, not all three. So since there's only two lines that are equal, not all three, there's only going to be one line of symmetry on that one. And for those that are not sure how to do it, you do not need to draw your line, which means it's going to get a wobbly and weird. If you go in to shape, there is an option right here to insert a line. So with the insert of the line, what I would do is I would just go ahead, even outside of it, I would set it up. Notice how you're getting your angle. So you can make sure you have a straight line. Uh oh, I didn't want to do that. No, oh, Mr. Green messed up. Undo that one. Here we go. Boom. Okay. So, well, that means that we can go into the point of the shape where we can draw the line and go straight down through it. I'm not going to get too technical or too particular about it. That wasn't even a perfect line, but it's going to tell me where you see your line of symmetry. I will accept that. If it's like I did originally and it's right there, clearly that's not a line of symmetry. I won't accept that. But this works. If you want to change the color of it to make it a little more obvious, with the Cami app, you can do that, obviously, down here in the color choices. But that will work perfectly for me. With the rest of the worksheet, same concept. You can draw an actual straight line through and make it work out for you. I don't want to do the dialog box. Ignore me. Don't worry about it. Okay. The other, yes, there are two worksheets. A little easier, hopefully, just an observational a worksheet assignment. You're basically looking at all these shapes. There's a line going through each one of them. The question on each of these is asking the same thing. Is that a line of symmetry? If you were to fold your piece of paper that is in that shape down that line, folding it over, is it going to match up perfectly to make it a line of symmetry? That's all you need to find out. If it does, yes. If it doesn't, no. Right? That's easy enough. Looking at number one. Well, if I were to take that and fold it where that line is, what's going to happen? This corner here and this corner here are not going to meet up. So it's not a line of symmetry. So that would be a new. And you move on along the rest of those the same way. Okay, again, not too, hopefully, complex worksheets for you today. 
uh, just getting you through the practice of seeing line symmetry on shapes because that's what it's all about today, symmetry. Simple enough? I hope so. We'll see how it goes for you. Have a good rest of your day. Get all your work done. Google Meets today go for first and third hour, first at 10 a.m., third at 11 a.m. I'll see you two then. The rest, if you need help, email me. Take it easy. Be good.